All right, so we're going to install the Infinite Options app by ShopPad. Um, so we're just going to start from the top. Um, this is my Shopify dashboard. So you're going to go into Apps, type in Infinite Options, Enter, Search. And this one right here is the one we want. So we're going to click on that. We're going to say Add App. And you can see everything it's asking for, just like any, any other app. Go ahead and install app. All right, go ahead and approve the charge. Um, you do have a free two-week trial um, or 14-day trial, and then after that, it's going to be $9.99 a month. It is more than worth it, in my opinion. The shop had developers also have other apps um, to help with automation and everything like that. Um, so I really love this app. Go ahead and click approve. All right, and then this is what the app's going to look like. Um, so let's go and um, talk about option sets. So this is where you're going to build all your option sets to have those additional things appear on your listings. Um, now, one thing I do want to mention as well is you kind of want to have a game plan going into making your option sets. Um, I have an Excel sheet here that I've made just on my own personal things I offer. Um, to kind of more make it make more sense in my brain um, of everything I want to offer. So you can see like I have the garment size, um, the tag I'll assign to the product in the Shopify side. I use tags for all my listings. There's multiple different ways. Um, you'll see in a little bit when we dive into it that you can assign it. This is the easiest way um, in my opinion to do it is tag. So this is the tag I'm going to assign, the option display name, um, what actually shows on that listing, um, the option type, and then everything to put in to have these appear in that drop down. Um, you can kind of see things like this that I numbered 1, 1.1, 1 1.2. Um, those are going to be con some conditional logic stuff, um, for example, because I have different garment types. So I want them to first pick their garment type, whether it be a short sleeve, long sleeve, sweatshirt, hoodie, etc. And then um, once they pick their garment type, then the colors will appear for them to choose from. Um, so let's go back to Shopify. So now that we're back in the Infinite Options app, let's go ahead and make some option sets. So we're going to say create a new option set and click the drop down. This option set one, that is a title that only you will see. So you can quickly identify these going back and forth. That way you're not clicking and expanding the more option sets you get. So the, for the purpose of this example, I'm going to say embroidery size. Um, and then when the next option is when product tag, this is a drop down. Uh, you see it says tag, vendor, type, URL, handle, and all products. Tag is the most beneficial way I've found to do it. That way you're not always having to go back into this app and manually update it like you would if you chose URL because each URL or handle is unique. Um, so I'm going to say tag, and I've already listed out all of my tags. Um, so if you look at the Excel sheet I made right here, this is going to be adult size. Copy, paste that. And you look, I already found 208 matching products. It goes out and looks for them. And if you click here, you can go ahead and preview some of those. So you know what listings it's going to go to. Um, label on product. So this is going to be what I named the option display name. And if you hover over the little eye, it tells you the info. This text will appear above the option field on your storefront product page. Acts as a title for your option. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. Oh, whoops. Uh, paste that. All right, label on cart. Again, the text that appears at the cart summary screen, check out on the order details page next to what the customer has input or selected for the option. We recommend making this unique for all your options. So that's going to be key. You want it to be unique for all your options. All right, so label on cart. 
for this, it's going to be the same thing as label on product. And the input type, you have a very um, various options here. Um, I mainly use drop down or text. So this is going to be a drop down and then option values. So thankfully for this, you have a bulk add option, which is really handy. So I'm going to X out that, click the bulk option add. And even though this isn't a lot, it helps when you get into things like shirt colors and etc. Let's capitalize that L. All right, so you're gonna say save values and it popped each one of them on its own line. Um, you can rearrange these as needed and placeholder text. You don't have to put anything here, but I sometimes like to. So it's just going to be like a vague gray text if I remember. You're just going to say something like choose your garment size. All right, show more options. This we can get into a little bit later, some of these, um, but for every option set you make, you want to make sure it's a required field. They're going to be able to add to cart without it being filled out if you do not click yes. And then conditional logic we'll get into in my next example with uh, styles and colors and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and make another option set. So I'm just going to class this one, say create option set, and you'll see that every time you create a new option set, it's gonna pop up to the top. Um, and IO, you're able to reorder these items. And you'll want to make note of the order you have them shown here is the order they're going to show up in the listing. Um, for some things that don't matter, other things not so much. Um, so for building the second option set, we're going to say garment style and color for this example. Um, again, I'm going to use the tag. Um, and my tag for this is I have two of them just because I host all as well. Um, I'm going to paste in this example, and boom, 64 matching products appear. Um, you can also add both of them in here by and or. So when the product tag is blank, and then we're going to say or, sorry, delete that one, or when product tag is this other one. And you may think these are random letters. For me, this means wholesale both. And by both, I mean um, I have Gildan options and Port and Company brand options. So um, makes sense to me in the back end. And you can see that more products appeared because it says now we have 124 matching products. So label on product. So this is going to be my first um, drop down. So we're going to say copy garment style. And label on cart, it's nine times out of 10, it's always the label on product for me. And we're gonna say drop down menu. So we're gonna add our option values, X out that line item, say bulk add. And I have all my option values here. Take out those quotation marks, say values, paste it all in here. And again, click advanced options make that a required field. Now my garment style is always gonna appear on the listing, so I don't need, need to make conditional logic rule yet. Um, I'm going to collapse this option and say, add other custom field, another custom field. So that's gonna give me a second option for this option set. We're still in this garment style and color option set. So for this label on product, I'm going to say, it's going to be the first option I have is Gildan short sleeve t-shirt color. I'm going to copy that label on product and paste it into the label on cart. Again, this is a drop down menu. We're going to click out that and say bulk add. And we're going to grab colors, save values. And they appear again, advanced options. Yes, for a required field. Now, this is where you're going to want to set up a conditional logic rule. So conditional logic, create a new conditional logic rule. So you're going to have this garment, this Gildan short sleeve color drop down appear if these fields match. 
So we're going to say label on cart. Um, this option will appear based on other option sets you based on other options within the option set. Sorry. Um, that you already have in here. So the only other thing I have in this option set is the garment style. So we're going to say if garment style is, and then you're going to have to pick what the garment style matches. So you're going to have to go and click one of your option values and copy over. So if the option value is Gildan short sleeve adult t-shirt, I want them to show this field I have of t-shirt colors. So that is it for that option. Collapse that. All right, so we're gonna add another custom field. So for this option, I'm going to use one of my port and company um, color options just to give a different example. So we're going to say label on product is going to be port and co short sleeve t-shirt color label on cart is going to be the same thing. This is going to be another drop down menu and option values. X out that first one, click bulk add, copy from my master list over here, paste in, take off those expectations save values, boom, pop them all in. So we're going to click show advanced options and make this a required field again. And then this is something we don't want to show all the time. We want it to show up based on their selection through the conditional logic. So we're going to say create a new conditional logic. So we're going to show this field if any, any or all. Sometimes you might want all, sometimes you might want any. So the label on the cart. So this time you see that I have two options to choose from because I have two other options within the option set. But again, for this example, based on their first selection, it's going to be garment style and it's going to be is. And we're going to scroll back up and we need to go to that main option and say Important Co. Source Short Sleeve T. Collapse this. Go back down. Garment style is Important Co. Short Sleeve T. All right. So we're going to. What do I have a? No. So we're going to collapse this. Collapse this. Say save changes. All right, so it says updates can take a few minutes to display. Um, this is sometimes true, especially the more option sets you get in here. I've noticed that it sometimes takes a minute to update. So let's look at a listing to verify that what we just did in IO pulled over. So first you can see we have the garment size, we have the garment style, and we have the t-shirt color. Now you can see on the garment size, it just says choose your garment size. The size isn't pre-chosen for you. And that's because we filled in the placeholder text for this one. If you don't want the first option to always appear, you can go back in to IO and fill in the placeholder text. So you can say, choose, a choose, this is a style, so choose a style. And then on the t-shirt color, so choose a color. You can save changes. And we'll give that just a minute to update and then go back. Go back to the listing. Now you refreshed it and you can see the color went away because our first default option is choose a style. There's no default with drop downs. So if you now if you click Gildan short sleeve T, the color appears. And the other option we put in was the port and coast short sleeve tee. So if you click that drop down, it changes for you and gives you all of those shirt colors. So you see that IO can be very powerful and give you a lot more customization than what just the Shopify variants can give you for not only the 100 variants plus, but for items or text as customization. Because you see for this example here, I'd want to also collect the third color they want to use, the fabric number, and then also their monogram, and that would be a custom text field. So the next thing I want to show y'all is how you can do the upcharges or the bundling. 
So if you go back to um, IO, what we're going to bundle is we're going to upcharge for some of our options for garment style. For example, the long sleeve, the shirts, the sweatshirts, and the hoodies will cost more. So how you do that is this little price tag over here. It says click to select an add-on product and connect to an option. The selected product will be added to the cart page along with the main product to increase the order's total cost. So what you're going to have to do for these is you're going to have to make a separate listing in Shopify for the price differential from your base pricing to the upcharge. For example, I have several different upcharges here. Um, for example, my base pricing for an embroidered um, design like we were looking at earlier with the monogram might be $26 for a grilled and short sleeve tee. So if they want, you know, the Port and Company short sleeve tee, which is a more premium tee garment dyed option, um, it's going to cost $2 more. Price it out, that's what I've determined. So if I go into this listing, um, I keep it very vague. I don't really put a lot in just the upgrade or upcharge listings. Um, just make a graphic so it shows up in a cart. You're going to do pricing, um, charge tax on this product if that's relevant for you. Um, I don't do anything about the SKU with barcode. I don't track the quantity. Um, a lot of there's a lot of questions about how to differentiate um, price or sorry weight. Um, that's going to matter a lot when you do sweatshirts and hoodies. Um, you will add the weight in the this listing. You can see right here, weight one ounce. These tees really don't weigh that much more than the Gildan tees, so just an ounce. On some of my sweatshirts and hoodie listings, I think I have those at like eight to ten ounces anywhere. Um, if you, if you ship them, you know what they weigh. So now that you have made your upcharge product in Shopify, we are going to go back to IO and we are going to find the option value that we want to bundle or have the upcharge for. So we're going to click the price tag. We are going to enter the item, port and co. And let's see, do, do, do. port and co short sleeve armor type upgrade. I'm going to click that to add and it's going to be the bundle done and you can see it's bundled here. So if you click save changes and then we will go back to the listing, refresh it. And then now if you see you click the port and code short sleeve T. If we add to cart, oh, I gotta pick all our options. See, this is a good way why you need to say it's a required field. It'll give you a prompt telling you so. Add to cart, we're gonna view cart. And you can see the way IO does it is it adds a separate line item for that pricing. So something that Amy mentioned as well when you do these upcharges, it's so they're not caught on the back end since these are these options in IO are in no way, shape, or form tied to Shopify. You can't increase the base Shopify pricing. It'd be helpful to say something like plus two dollars here. That way they know when they get to cart, it's an additional two dollars for this premium option. So if we save these changes. And then we go back to the listing and refresh it to pull in those updates. Now, if we go to garment style, we can see that the plus $2 is also shown on that option. So that alerts them, hey, it's an additional $2 at cart. So I hope y'all can see that any type of variant app can be very helpful in setting up your listings and allowing you to fully give your customers what you want.